When the name Elon Musk comes up, there are sure chances that you must think of him as the founder of Tesla or CEO of SpaceX. However, what you might not know is the most recent venture of the billionaire. That is Starlink Satellite Internet. Hi, welcome to another brand new video on Modern Day Geeks. Today we'll be discussing the upcoming very popular and on the same hand very controversial Elon Musk's Starlink Satellite Internet service. So without further ado, let's get into it. Starlink is a venture of Elon Musk focused on providing seamless high-speed internet connection available globally through a bunch of interconnected satellite networks. As explained by the statements on the website of Starlink, unbound by the traditional ground-based infrastructure hindrances, Starlink will provide a high-speed broadband internet connection to the areas where access has been unreliable or completely unavailable. This statement is quite self-explanatory. However, let's dive deep and start from the beginning to understand what Starlink is and what goes in the background of this contrasting concept of internet connection to the fiber optic one. Announced back in 2015 as a side block of SpaceX, Starlink's initial focus was to become an internet service provider for such customers who dwell in locations that face frequent or all-out access issues caused by either inadequate infrastructure or no infrastructure at all. However, for almost three to four years in between, Starlink was in its development phase. Amid these development phases, Musk kept sending satellites into space using SpaceX's carrier. However, the venture took flight in 2021. It's when the company announced they almost had 2,000 internet-providing satellites orbiting the Earth, and Starlink services are also active in 32 countries. At the moment, no one can give a fair word about how successful the project is. Starlink has developed an imaginary constellation network, where they plan to land their satellites, and once the constellation network is complete, it will be up and run at its full capacity, providing internet globally without any reliability issues or concerns of disruptions. To date, more than 2,000 satellites from Starlink have reached orbit and are now part of the constellation. However, it is still a long way for Mr. Musk to achieve what he claims. What he claims is that once the network is completely active, no part of this world will be left where you won't have access to the internet. This means Elon is not just working on a small thing here and the focus of Elon is not simply to connect your home to the internet or your office. Although the initial plan was to provide access to those living in remote areas who are disconnected due to constraints of fiber optic cable, which cannot reach every corner of the world. However, from what it seems, Elon is working on something bigger. Bigger, like taking the internet to the red planet. Didn't I tell you that it was a crazy idea? Well, if I didn't know you for yourself. But let's forget Mars and the bigger picture of Musk. For now, let's just talk about how he's going to provide internet to the whole Earth and how one can connect to the Starlink network. So the idea behind the workings is as simple as the workings of a satellite phone. And maybe not exactly as a radio, but you still get the idea, right? When you apply for a connection of Starlink, they provide you with a small dish antenna, which is almost the size of a pizza box, and a router. You simply have to set up your antenna on the roof and connect the wire to the provided router and done. You can then access the internet. What goes behind will not be the concern of most consumers, but for the sake of a larger audience, the idea is that the request from your device goes to the router, which then sends it to the satellite using the connection via the antenna dish. And then once the request is approved, you get the required results through the opposite chain of reactions. The system is not flawless, as some incidents have been reported regarding issues with speed and connectivity, and sometimes a total outage of internet on the Starlink network. These issues occurred due to several reasons, including weather, locations, and systematic errors. However, Starlink claims to be improving its systems, and with the time, the problems will die down eventually. How much does the connection cost? As of now, the limited connection availability at specific locations has raised the operational prices, and for now, the price of getting Starlink connection is high. To be precise, to get a Starlink internet connection, one has to pay $599 up front and a monthly subscription charge of $110. Furthermore, another premium service of Starlink is also available for Grab that costs around $500 a month as a usage fee and $2,500 a month as a one-time connection and equipment charge. Honestly speaking, $599 for an internet connection, which isn't exactly as fast as a fiber option network, 
is a huge sum to pay, and even the premium connection isn't anywhere as near to a cable connection when it comes to providing the right internet speed. However, Starlink claims as their customer base grows and the location where the internet will be available grows, the prices will eventually go down. How fast is the Starlink internet connection? If compared with some of the other satellite internet providers, Starlink is performing much better, especially after the tweaks done by Starlink to fulfill its claims of higher internet speed in 2022. Starlink Connection has been able to beat all its competitors in terms of providing reliable speed. However, there is a long way to compete with a counterpart fiber connection. Currently, according to Okla, the download speed of Starlink is reported to be 90 megabytes per second, which is higher than the counterpart satellite internet providers. However, still lower than the medium speed of all internet providers in the US, 144 megabits per second. How is it better than a fiber optic connection? I know it's natural to think that when a fiber connection is better in every way, because, for example, it's faster, cheaper, then why would someone switch to Starlink? For now, I cannot answer the question because obviously a fiber connection seems to be the better option. However, what Starlink is aiming at is huge. That is providing global availability of Starlink's Wi-Fi connection anywhere and everywhere. This would surely be a groundbreaking achievement for Starlink and an end to the wired connection. This is how Starlink claims to dominate the world of the internet. For now, you might think fiber optic is better, but imagine there will be a time you won't be bound to be in a certain place to connect to the internet. Your fiber connection must be fast, but it's available in your car while you're traveling on an interstate. But on the other hand, if you have a subscription to Starlink, there won't be a place where you cannot access the internet. Problems with Starlink? Well, have you ever heard of something new without hearing controversies about it first? The same is the case with Starlink. The Guardians of the Skies claim that launching this many satellites into orbit will be the end of the magical night skies and a huge disappointment for stargazers. I won't say that this isn't a valid concern. However, Starlink claims to achieve its goals by doing lesser and lesser harm to nature's gifts to this world. Who's right? Let time do its thing and we'll see about it. That's it for now. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, please like and subscribe to the channel and hit the bell icon for future notifications. Let us know in the comments about more content you wish to see on this channel. Till then, take good care of yourself, and I'll see you in the next one.